Before we do get into today's video, I do want to give a little disclaimer. The purpose of this video is to simply give you a development timeline of Battlefield 2042, giving you the accounts of not only current developers at DICE, but also past developers as well. The purpose of this video is not to hit on Battlefield 2042 and its developers, but give the community some understanding into exactly what happened, in addition to also giving you a sneak preview into the future of the Battlefield franchise. EA was notified of this video and its contents, but unfortunately they did not provide comments in time before this video going live. I also do want to give a big shout out to Crash Games, he's the one that helps me get a lot of information and research done in today's video. In addition to that, I also want to give a shout out to Danny on PC, who also provided the list of developers that have left the studio in the past couple of years. I'll be leaving those links down in the description below. But anyway guys, without further ado, let's jump into today's video. Battlefield 2042 instantly got off to a rough start towards the end of 2018 as many senior figures in the Battlefield franchise left during Battlefield 5's development. Many of the team founded the now known Embark Studios and despite that studio being founded in November of 2018, many of those senior figures that founded the company actually left during Battlefield 5's development with non-competition clauses. The five founders of Embark Studios alone had an impressive combined experience of 91 years at DICE and with other people leaving the studio as well to founder either new studios or join existing studios, it was instantly clear that Battlefield 2042 lacked the experience of Battlefield developers. The majority of these figures left DICE for one simple reason, that being creative freedom. Time and time again developers would pitch impressive ideas that were ahead of its time, but with EA wanting to compete against the competition instead of getting ahead of it, many senior developers simply had enough and wanted their own creative freedom. EA already had their eyes set on the next big thing within the gaming world, and that of course was Battle Royale. Of course, at this time, there was also Battlefield 5's Firestorm in development by DICE and in collaboration with Criterion Games. However, due to Battlefield 5's poor sales, it was expected that Firestorm wasn't going to get the desired effect that EA wanted for its post-launch sales. But that mainly came down to its competition, with the likes of Fortnite, Players Unknown's Battlegrounds, H1Z1 and even Black Ops 4's Blackout Battle Royale all dominating the gaming market. Combining this with the fact that many senior figures who were working on Battlefield 5 were now leaving the studio, it was deemed that Battlefield 5's Firestorm was going to be a struggle to get going from the very beginning. Of course, EA did acquire Respawn Entertainment just one year prior to these decisions, however it was expected that EA was going to put on a $60 price tag over Apex Legends with its standard 3 to 6 month marketing scheme, but luckily this decision was overturned later on by convincement from Respawn Entertainment that a free to play battle royale brought onto the market with no formal marketing would be much better in terms of boosting its player base and also converting those users into paid users with its post launch content plans. Now at the time as all of these decisions were being placed, it wasn't entirely clear from EA on how well Apex Legends was going to perform. After all, it was not going to be tied to the Titanfall universe directly with its brand, and instead it was essentially going to become its own IP, which was described as a huge risk when it came to being able to not capitalise on the Battle Royale genre. However, of course, EA did have one of its biggest franchises under its belt, and that was Battlefield. EA essentially told DICE very early on in development that they should just copy what's popular, and of course what was popular at that moment in time 
was the battle royale genre. This is the stage of development where some of the features that we see in Battlefield 2042 today actually originated from. The likes of the vehicle calling tablets and also the game's new plus system all originated from this stage of development. However, even this early on in development, DICE had already come across its biggest hurdle that it would face in the last decade, and that was Frostbite. Due to the nature of Battlefield titles releasing every two years, DICE never really had the time or the opportunity to upgrade Battlefield to the newest versions of Frostbite, so the very engine that DICE created, they was actually years behind on. Battlefield 5, for example, released on a 2016 version of Frostbite, and this was the year in which DICE and EA had decided that Battlefield should upgrade, especially because of all of the features and plans that they had for this Battlefield title. Well, it was expected that DICE would have no problem upgrading Battlefield to this newer version of Frostbite, because after all, DICE are the very developers that built the Frostbite engine, so why would it be a problem? Well, it turns out it actually was, because most of the developers that have been working on Frostbite for the past 10 to 15 years had already left DICE, and a project that was meant to take six months actually took 18 months and we'll be getting more into that in today's video because well the upgrade with the frostbite engine was a significant issue that affected the development of battlefield 2042. In February 2019, Apex Legends, a brand new free-to-play title, exploded into the gaming world in a massive surprise announcement and release by Respawn Entertainment and EA. The title reached a staggering 2.5 million unique players in its first 24 hours, with 50 million unique players total in its first month alone. Although EA finally had that piece of the Battle Royale market they so desired, it wasn't entirely clear on how well Apex Legends would perform over a longer period of time. So, with continued frostbite issues and the Battlefield Battle Royale development continuing, there wasn't really a major change in development until around late 2019 to early 2020. This is believed to be around the time where classes as we knew them were removed from Battlefield. The reason being, well, Apex Legends was proving to be a financial success with its characters, Call of Duty specialists were proving to be a financial success for Activision, in addition to DICE's Battlefield 5 data indicating that engagement figures for Battlefield 5 characters was actually much better over other customization options in previous Battlefield titles. Combining all of this information with the fact that loot boxes continued to be cracked down on by governments across the world, EA needed an additional revenue stream for its Battlefield title, and that revenue stream would be specialists. In March 2020, the vast majority of people working on Battlefield 2042 started to work from home during the COVID-19 pandemic. Not only was this a situation unprecedented in gaming development, but it continued to add to the ongoing problems of development on the game and with that Frostbite integration that was still plaguing the studio for well over a year now. The game's builds that we've all been hearing about these past couple of months is one of the biggest hurdles that developers faced in the brand new working from home environment. Builds of the game do change daily, and with that, more often than not, developers need to download an entire new build of the game every single day in able to continue progress. 
A process that would usually take just a few minutes in the office could take several hours of a VPN and a wireless internet connection now, which drastically reduced the amount of development time developers actually had developing Battlefield 2042. Working from home also presented another problem too. Equipment. Despite what a lot of people probably believe, not every developer that's had to work from home has a high-end PC and four individual consoles on their dining room table. Instead, they needed to rely on a new leasing system in which they could use other people's consoles over a remote desktop. Gone were the days of massive studios and the accessibility of being able to get any console you wanted at any given time, you instead needed to rely on other people and other people's equipment whilst they was also working on their own problems and bugs during the development process of not only just Battlefield 2042, but every game developed and released during the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition to this, working from home presented another problem from those who were inexperienced in the studio and game development in general. Junior developers could no longer learn the ropes from more experienced people, which presented a logistical nightmare for the senior developers on the game. Getting Battlefield 2042 working across five platforms was a massive issue and more often than not, DICE's Slack channel was filled with devs asking for help on a console that they not only didn't have themselves, but they was also very inexperienced on. Between April 2020 and August 2020 is where one of the biggest shifts in Battlefield 2042 happened, and that is the removal of the Battle Royale game that we discussed previously. Instead, the game would now shift towards a more standardised Battlefield title, with huge maps, 128 players, and of course the specialists that have been concepted the past couple of months. The reason for the change is believed to be because of the release of Call of Duty's Warzone, which proved to be a massive success for Activision, and EA wanted Battlefield to pivot towards that direction. This is around the time in which the whole direction of Battlefield 2042 changed and became more of a traditional Battlefield title, with the game's original concept now turning into Hazard Zone that we got on the final release of the game. Now, the intention of Hazard Zone was of course to release it as a free-to-play BR experience, but somewhere down the line that decision was overturned and instead it became more of a part of Battlefield 2042 rather than a separate entity. August 2020 is very significant with the development of Battlefield 2042 because, well, this is the date in which pre-production on Battlefield 2042 had ended, which is the point in which post-production would now start, all of the concepts and ideas were finalised and the game wasn't really going to be changing direction from this point out. This meant that post-production of Battlefield 2042 was only going to last one year and three months, which not only is short for a Battlefield title on this scale, but it's very short for a title that is being developed in a global pandemic in a working from home environment, which is the reason why so many teams of developers joined the studio towards the latter half of the development cycle. Now what's fascinating about everything said so far in today's video is that the vast majority of it can be obtained by just doing a little bit of research on the internet. For example, looking at the concept arts released a couple of days ago officially by EA, we can see class locking soldiers for example in these concept arts by Nicholas Gecko but he joined DICE January 2020. 
fire tornadoes, mass destruction and flooding, standard soldiers concepted by Jonas Ackland. He joined DICE in August 2019. And then finally we have some concepts by Jacob Kowalski, which shows Orbital being flooded, the Hourglass map being on a huge mass scale with a lot more things filled out within the map, Standard Soldiers once again, and he joined DICE December 2019. In addition to this, we can also see on several developers' profiles over on LinkedIn that pre-production of Battlefield 2042 did end in August 2020. And finally, we all should know of the rocket launch internal trailer that was leaked earlier on in the year. Well, that was being produced in early 2020. And just in case you don't believe my sources for whatever reason, we know that the soundtrack of that trailer is by Two Way, in which that track was released in June 2020. So, well, that trailer that we've seen couldn't have been done any time before June 2020. In addition to that, we also know that this was the trailer shown off to QA in early 2021. I believe the date is around March. And we can see that, well, in that trailer, if you guys have seen it, obviously I can't put it on screen for obvious reasons. But we can see from that trailer that was drafted up in early 2020, that specialists, or at least the specialist player models at that particular moment in time, just wasn't a thing for Battlefield 2042. Now moving on to February 2021, because as the difficulties of working at home continued, this is where the communication issues started on Battlefield 2042. In the February 2021 earnings call to investors and the public, it was our first ever mention of Battlefield being in development and where it was at within its development title. CEO of EA Andrew Wilson reported to investors and the public that I can tell you now that the Battlefield team is doing an incredible job. They are way ahead of where they need to be in prior product cycles on track for their earliest feature complete in franchise history. He then went on and continued to say, Featuring maps with unprecedented scale, the next edition of Battlefield takes all of the destruction, player agency, vehicle and weapon combat that the franchise is known for and elevates it to another level. The team is focused and the game is ahead of our internal milestones. Now, despite these very strong comments coming from the CEO of EA, I was told by a past developer on Battlefield 2042 that these comments were solely made on the fact that it was predictions and not because the game was in an alpha or a playable state or anything of the matter. These comments were solely made on the assumptions and predictions of some very inexperienced people at DICE in their brand new roles. It's believed that the game would be in its alpha stage in March of 2021, but as that date got closer and closer, it was finally time for DICE to admit defeat and ask for additional help on the project. In March 2021, Criterion joined DICE officially, and it was expected that the development would soon improve, but once again, with a lot of lack of experience on the new Frostbite engine, development was proving to be difficult, and it was very difficult to get a stable version of the game. This is the point in which QA was actually QA testing concept art, in addition to the internal trailer created one year prior, and it was the point in which DICE admitted that they might need additional help on Battlefield 2042. June 2021 is when the Frostbite CTO joined on Battlefield 2042, 
to basically get the game on track and get a stable build of the game ready for the technical playtests that was scheduled to take place over the course of the next couple of months. Meanwhile, while Frostbite CTO was trying to clean up and organise the mess that was created, EA continued with its June marketing plan, releasing two individual trailers, the official reveal trailer, in addition to the Battlefield 2042 official multiplayer trailer that had to be captured in such a way that it wouldn't show off all of the problems that of course the game was facing at that moment in time. In July 2021, the Battlefield 2042 project was at a critical status, and in fact the UI of the game puts the entire project at risk. Now it's not entirely clear on why or how the UI got so out of hand, but it's believed that it could be contributed to the fact that a few lead UI scripters did leave DICE just a couple of months prior to the main issues, and additionally DICE brought in a contractor called Netlight in April of 2020. Unfortunately, I don't really have that much information at this moment in time as to why the UI stuff went so horribly wrong, but it could explain how and why we got what we got with the final version of Battlefield 2042. August 2021 was of course the month in which the technical playtest for the game happened. Of course everyone playing that test found the game to be very unstable and have horrible performance issues and this was on the map Orbital which is the map that was developed from the very beginning. Orbital was the proof of concept map to not only show off the game's game breaking destruction that's well we don't see on any other map but it was also the map as a proof of concept to show the likes of the player size etc etc and therefore it had the most development time and was the most developed and stable map in Battlefield 2042 at that time. The technical playtest did conclude and if anything it just added to DICE's problems with how stable this game was going to be not only during the beta but also during the final release of the game. In addition to this, this is also the month in which I received a heads up that the game was actually in a troubled state and believe it or not this was obtained to me by a different developer from an entirely different studio. Now I'm sure that I can't speak of everyone working on Battlefield 2042, but from a few people that I've spoke to it's became that much of a stress work environment that they was venting their frustration not only at DICE employees that already left the company, but also to other studios that are working on completely different games. So that just gives you a general idea on how development of this game was going at this particular moment in time. From here on out this is where development of course continued and the troubles continued as well but it's also the time in which insiders including myself got word that both the beta of the game and the final launch of the game will be delayed. Now at this particular moment in time it wasn't entirely clear on how long the delay will be but then after a couple of hours it was cleared up that the delay would only be a matter of weeks instead of months in which some of the developers of the game wanted in being able to ensure that the game would release in a better state. The delay was actually put on the engineering side of the game, I'm not entirely sure on the details of that, but essentially some of the engineering stuff that needed to be done on the back side of the game just wasn't going to be able to fit in the release date time frame that the studio was given, so instead they was given an additional few weeks to get the game out of the gate.
Finally, towards the end of the development cycle, the game did have its beta in which, well, was an alpha. And then, of course, the game did release in November, which is the game we're all playing or not playing at this particular moment in time. So how did we get here with Battlefield 2042? Well, there's been a lot of contributing factors that we've discussed in the development timeline of Battlefield 2042, including Battlefield finally moving over to a latest version of Frostbite that took over one half of its development cycle, a development team that lacked experience on Frostbite compared to its previous team, and in addition to all this, the whole post-production of Battlefield 2042 was done at to work at home environment in which developers were unequipped with the task at hand. Ultimately though, all of Battlefield 2042's problems comes down to one major factor that I think we all wish we had a little more of, and that of course is time. Considering all of the issues that DICE faced during the development process of the game, I can't help think to myself why around 90% or so of games developed during the COVID-19 pandemic have been delayed by 3-6 to six months at a minimum and Battlefield 2042 wasn't. It's obvious that the game would have been more polished at launch and I truly believe that if the Battlefield community would have waited another year if needed, it would have meant that we would have got the Battlefield that we all wanted. The game is clearly moving into a direction that I think that everyone expected, but poor design choices such as a lack of a leaderboard and not truly tying the specialists to classes, in my eyes, are just poor decisions. Decisions that I think if the developers were given more time with QA testing and also consulting other people within the Battlefield community would have been overturned. Although I've been incredibly critical with how EA Game Changers handled their NDAs in the past, I'm still scratching my head as to why these Game Changers were not consulted more during the development process of the game. After all, most of these Game Changers even have more experience on Battlefield than the majority of the new leads in the studio. It's clear that DICE is a shadow of its former self, with some even arguing that DICE shouldn't even be the name of the studio anymore, with almost all of the leads that worked on the likes of Battlefield 3 and 4 leaving the studio in recent years. EA and DICE leads need to push its developers to innovate against the competition instead of just competing against it. A similar game to Battlefield 4 plus Dinosaurs, a GTA 4 co-op experience before GTA 4 even released, and Bad Company 3 were all canned projects that EA felt wasn't going to sell enough copies. These are games that I feel like not only gamers would have wanted, but also the developers making them. And I feel like if they was done in the right way, they would have also hit the revenue targets to make the games profitable. EA has already seen innovation being successful with Apex Legends, but unfortunately the future of Battlefield at this time seems like it'll be following in its footsteps rather than innovating on it. The next Battlefield title is scoped to be a hero shooter of sorts, with one past developer saying that the game doesn't even have armies fighting, but it's just bands of specialists fighting. This isn't innovation, this is just copying the competition. The Battlefield universe that EA speaks so highly of is nothing more than adding depth to the specialists, and although that a Battle Royale doesn't seem like it's going to be on the cards in the next six months, it is definitely planned to come to the Battlefield universe in the very near future. Although I think it's very safe to say that Battlefield 2042 has had a disastrous launch, there are still some positives to take away from it. I've seen with my own eyes the very hard work and dedication the developers are putting in in order to make Battlefield 2042 the best game it can be. And I could also say with confidence that I know that DICE have already acknowledged some of the design decisions that the community are not happy about. It's not clear exactly what will be changed at this stage, but it's very good to see that behind the scenes, DICE are listening to community feedback and of course fixing all of the bugs within the game. I think if we can come together as a community, continue to report bugs and give constructive feedback, 
I feel like in a few months time Battlefield 2042 will be a decent Battlefield experience. There's still plenty bits and bobs of information to talk about with Battlefield 2042 and of course I'll be keeping you all updated with all of the information in regards to not only 2042 but the future of the Battlefield franchise. At the end of this video I also wanted to thank all of you for watching this video and supporting what I do and also if you would like to head over to my American candy business called Candy Crate to get yourself some American sweets and also help fund what I do with reporting all of this gaming news that would be greatly appreciated. We're currently shipping to the UK and Europe but of course if you live somewhere else please just drop me a DM over on Twitter and we'll see what we can do over there as well but anyway guys that is going to be pretty much it for this video i've been tom henderson and i'll see you all in the next one